Hey, hi, hi everyone. Anthony Fantano here, internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of the new Jack White album, Boarding House Reach. Songwriter, multi-instrumentalist, producer, formerly one half of the White Stripes, Mr. Jack White out with a brand new commercial album. His third commercial solo album, and I use the word commercial very loosely here because uh, th there, there's not much about this album that is, that is very commercial. This is maybe Jack White's most unmarketable album yet, to the point where I'm, I'm, I'm not quite sure what to make of some of this record, uh, but simultaneously, I can't help but be in awe of just how off the deep end Jack White is on this album. I'm so happy, I am so, so happy that he has broken the cycle of, of writing coffeehouse rock, of writing tote bag rock on his past two records, uh, Blunderbuss and Lazaretto, both of which are decent albums. I think they're decent albums, they're listenable, they're fine, but are they as top notch as previous material from the White Stripes? Are they as exciting? Are they cutting edge? Heh. <laughs> Both records to me at the end of the day just kind of felt like mild exercises in blues rock and garage rock revivalism with kind of a singer-songwriter flair. Boarding House Reach, though, by comparison, is much more experimental, but somehow more aggressive and more hard-hitting as well. To the point where I think a lot of Jack White's hardcore listeners might react to this album somewhat negatively, because it is kind of a kooky album and goes against the consistency Jack White has delivered over the years. Because Boarding House Reach not only explores the hard rock and the blues rock and the garage rock that Jack White is known for, but also elements of funk and electronic music and art and experimental rock. Some of the production on this thing is kind of glitchy and noisy and very abrasive. There are elements where I feel like he's he's throwing in these little interstitial instrumental bits, some of which may be original, some of which may be sampled, and it sort of sounds like he's pulling together some kind of maximalist hip-hop beat where he's constantly just throwing samples in your face or different musical bits. A lot of the production on this thing is very intricate, very complex, and kind of, uh, psychedelic? Surreal? It's almost like on this album Jack is rebelling against himself, against everything he's sort of built his name on up until this point in a way. Which to me is something that definitely comes through on the opening track to this record, Connected by Love, a song that originally I hated. I hated this song when I first heard it. I was convinced this was like Jack White's worst song, period. The song is backed with this really stiff instrumental, this cycling, roaring, buzzing, synthetic bass line, a very simple, slow kick drum pattern, swinging hypnotically against these skittering weird percussive bits kind of panning from the left to the right channel. But Jack White's vocal performance is what ended up kind of winning me over on this song. Because not only do his lyrics on this track have these subtle nods to technology with him being connected to this person by love, but also th there's this amazingly nervous tension in his vocal performance that uh, is, is pretty incredible. There are many points on the song where it just sounds like Jack White is ready to pop. That and the swelling wall of instrumentation on the chorus are truly what really kind of makes the song fulfilling and interesting. Also, the aesthetics of the song are kind of at war with themselves, with Jack's voice, the rock instrumentation, the electronic bits, also these weird, chirpy background singers. We're connected! We're connected! Definitely some of the weirdest background singers I've, I've heard on a Jack White track ever. Again, even though I was feeling very negatively toward this song when I first listened to it, it has grown on me to be one of his boldest ballads yet. And there are a handful of other tracks that kind of are a bit of an aesthetic and anachronistic clash of electronic and acoustic instrumentation. The song Why Walk a Dog has the sequence drums in three. It's, it's kind of like a very stiff electro blues tune, but it's very dark, it's very downtrodden, it's very depressed, features these watery, serene, kind of trippy synthesizers that, that kind of have a bit of an organ tone to them. The buzzing synth bass on this track is kind of intense too, and Jack White's vocal performance is so dark, and the lyrics, uh, to me, it just kind of feels like he's detailing a relationship, but not necessarily a romantic one. Uh, one where he is being treated as the lesser, as like a commercial product. Really what I think he's trying to describe on this track is just being used being viewed as like just an object, which might be in line with a few moments on this album where it seems like Jack is kind of commenting on 
creativity and commercialism and the commodification of art and music. Honestly, the only issue I have with the song is I wish it was longer. I just love the, the sound of the track. I love the loud, gargantuan, mutant guitar solo, of which there are many on this record. Like, there are a lot of guitar solos that are just like fuzzed and burned out and glitched out and just like freaky as hell. There's also on the back end of the record a country-tinged ballad performed in close vocal harmony on the song What's Done Is Done. Uh, it kind of reminds me in a way of a lot of tracks off of the new Justin Timberlake record where you have this melding of vocals, some folk instrumentation, some synthetic drums. However, uh, in this instance, it, it doesn't sound like total crap. No, it, it actually sounds good. Like the way that the electronics balance out with the acoustic instrumentation is tasteful the vocals sound great, and the tune is really dark and compelling too. But really where this album is at its best for me are on these exciting fusions of rock and electronic music and funk. Songs like Corporation, which to me reads almost like a a lick or a groove out of an old meters song. The groove on this song is hard, it's nasty, the drums are exciting, it's just it's just pure experimental fun on this track with all these, you know, weird little shouty refrains with Jack White making these proclamations about wanting to start a corporation and that's how these days you get any adulation. Again, this track bringing back the themes of commercialism and corporatism and greed. The track Hyper Misophoniac, which I might be missing pronouncing is another funky experimental cut on the record, although it maybe it's the one moment where I feel like Jack really truly goes overboard with the uh, ascending and descending like clicking and cycling synthesizers that are mixed so hard they're just like completely in the right channel. They're just kind of throughout the entirety of the track with almost no change whatsoever. The rest of the mix is packed with like these flashy, jazzy saloon pianos, loud, roaring guitars, booming drums, these really twisted vocal manipulations. So when like a background vocal pops into the mix, sometimes it'll be at a normal pitch. Sometimes it'll sound like it's melting before your ears. It's a little difficult to listen to for me even now, but still I'm, I'm kind of in awe of just how cacophonous the track is. The song Ice Station Zebra is just as bold, just as funky, but there's a lot more organization and harmony to the instrumentation. The instrumental on this song is really just too intricate and insane for me to even begin to start describing, but really what kind of sells this song for me are Jack White's shouty, pretty much rapped vocals on the song, which after listening to it multiple times, it just kind of hit me. This is so Beck. Like Jack was just listening to Odelay era Beck mellow gold era Beck, and, and this was just like, could have possibly been an inspiration for this. His lyrics on the track are absurdist, they're silly, they're kind of tongue in cheek at points, but there are a lot of moments where it seems like he's making reference to creativity, the creative process, saying that uh, all people who are making something are copying God. And then there's the very explosive over and over and over. Over and over. Killer groove, killer production, super fuzzy, freaky, guitars on this thing. This was one of the tracks that I heard prior to the release of the album that got me thinking, well, you know, actually this this could be a great album. This could potentially be good and and maybe Jack White experimenting with more groovy instrumentation and more electronics might might be a good thing. Might be a good thing. And and I got to tell you, with the rest of this album growing on me, this song has just like become Ugh, so fantastic to me. The sound play is just top notch on this track and Jack works in so many interesting little instrumental bits just in between the grooves or different passages and sections of the song. Again, kind of reminds me of like a hip hop beat or an old school hip hop instrumental where all of a sudden a DJ would just like throw a drum break or a horn break or something into a track just to change things up or provide a different sound or tone or vibe. And the song Respect Commanders is separated into two distinct parts. The introductory moment of the track. Feels like a rock band trying to recreate the, the days of like 80s electro funk with these speedy light clockwork drum beats, these old school gargantuan synth hits. Woo! 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 The production is kind of trippy and psychedelic too. It, it feels like, uh, again, a rock band trying to recreate like a, an Africa Bambata instrumental. And then all of a sudden we transition into this slow, heavy, uh, just foreboding hard rock music where Jack White is singing about uh, respecting a woman and she, he's basically at her command. It uh, kind of kind of makes a, 
Uh, the idea of respecting the fair sex seem like kind of dark and kinky. Then there are some really odd spoken word moments on the record, like get in the mind shaft, which feels like uh, uh, like something pulled straight out of the Flaming Lips playbook. Later, the track transitions into this really funky psychedelia with talk box vocals and very playful grooves. Uh, as colorful as it all is, it's still pretty abrasive and weird. And there are a handful of kind of short, somewhat gimmicky interstitial tracks that bring the album from one section to the next. The song Everything You've Ever Learned sounds like a commercial for a dystopian future with Jack White in a very kind of eerie announcer voice talking about, oh, this is a advertisement for everything you've ever learned. The song Esmeralda Steals the Show is this really odd story song set to acoustic guitar. It's like a poetic story and Jack White is kind of performing the, the song in two different voices and two different vocal styles in each channel. Kind of reminds me of the Velvet Underground a little bit. And the fourth track of the record, which I'm not even going to try to pronounce, please just show the title of that, thank you very much, is a little poetic bit performed by C.W. Stone King. It's very dramatic, it's very theatrical, almost feels like he's performing in character on the song. The poetry is set to this really dramatic violin music that sort of sounds like it's from the Eastern Bloc. And the finishing track of the album is maybe the one spot on the record that kind of let me down a little bit. It feels like kind of a, a, a forgettable moment, even though I do kind of like the jazzy, smooth, lullaby-ish change of pace of the instrumentation. Uh, the melody, and obviously th this is referenced in the title of the song itself, is a play on a Dvorak song. I'm terrible when it comes to classical music to just, just leave, leave me, me alone. alone. But still, like, I'm super impressed with this record. I did not think I was going to like it at all. But uh, honestly... I've expected way more of Jack White than he's actually been delivering since he went solo for years. For years! Given just how eccentric he is and how left field he portrays himself to be, I feel like this is the kind of thing we should have been hearing almost all along. This record is such a creative display of texture and sound and color and composition. It's an aesthetic rush, it's incredibly dynamic, it's challenging and it's overwhelming, and yet it's very methodically composed, like you can definitely digest it, but it hits you with a lot. But at the end of the day, Jack clearly wanted to come through with a focused and a catchy and a coherent album. So, you know, I, I just love controlled creative chaos, and, and that's what this album uh, is to me. I like a lot of the lyrical and conceptual themes that kind of reveal themselves as I listen to the album again and again. I feel like this record really works in layers. There are so many amazing details I can come back to and pick up as I listen to the album again and again and again. And in a lot of ways, I feel like Jack is making a record that is truly reflective of the oversaturation of the information age and simultaneously uh, rebelling against modern rock orthodoxy. And for me, this album is also proof that whether or not rock music is refreshing or is pushing the envelope is dependent wholly on whether or not the artist is willing to take it there. All right, I'm going to leave it at that. Love this record. Great record. Fantastic record. Feeling a decent too strong nine on this album. Transition. Did you give this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best. You're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Please don't cry. Just leave a comment in the comments if you're feeling like you need to say something. And uh, over here next to my head, other videos you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano. Uh, hit, hit the reminder bell too. Forever.